Hey all today I'm playing Combat Mission Black Sea from Battlefront's Combat Mission franchise. The Combat Mission series has a long history dating back to the year 2000. The games are real-time or turn-based battlefield tactics simulators or war games. They're known as being the most or nearly the most realistic of the genre and multiple real-world militaries actually utilize the Combat Mission series, specifically Combat Mission Professional, as a training module for op board or operations order planning. It rubs shoulders with other hyper-detailed simulators like Command Modern Operations, which is also published to military buyers and is used by every U.S. Armed Forces branch as well as some European military organizations and even military industrial corporations. These titles simulate infantry and some combined arms tactics to an absurd degree, and playing these things uh, requires thinking and patience that very few, if any, other strategy games require. The games are totally unforgiving, brilliantly detailed and deep, and the community behind it all churns some really immersive custom missions, campaigns, and passion projects. That said, the series has some drawbacks, other than the obviously high prices on Steam despite the games being a decade or so old. You'll probably notice pretty quickly that by 2024 standards, the combat mission games don't look graphically appealing. Frame rates are often sub-30, even on very high-end gaming PCs. That's because these games have largely been made by two individuals and are made on a constrained budget, so every ounce of their effort has gone into the simulation under the hood rather than toward pretty visuals. That may turn a lot of people off. Even the fan community is begging for an updated game engine with updated models and systems. There are some mods though, mods that add new textures and uh, some graphics changes, as well as a number of sound overhauls and UI changes. Learning the combat mission games takes time. You'll want to read a few hundred pages of material across the various game manuals that come with these games, and you'll want to probably watch some fan-made tutorials on YouTube. But once you learn the ropes, it's super rewarding, I think. I'm still very new to the franchise, I have no military background, so I'm definitely going to make some embarrassing mistakes, but it's all in the fun of learning such a deep and complicated system. This one here is Black Sea, a theoretical war between Russia and the combined forces of the US and Ukraine. It takes place in 2017, and frankly, the setting feels a lot like the old Ghost Recon 1, where Russia steps over the border into Georgia. Troops, the vehicles, the general aesthetic of the post-USSR structures and the nearly modern level of war gear and tech all make it feel a lot like a strategy game version of the classic first-person shooter. Today I'm running through an after-action report of the practical exercise from the campaign. This mission is the conclusion of the game's tutorial. Let's take a look at what forces we're bringing and what the sit rep is. Op 4, represented here by Russian forces, have taken control of several critical road junctures in a rural gap in western Ukraine near the city of Lviv, using a fast-moving, motorized force operating behind the front lines. My responsibility is to seize one of the small townships at a critical intersection, while other Blue 4 elements seize the other nearby intersections. As this title takes place during a war, rules of engagement are loose, but I'm under orders to minimize damage to the church in the center of town. Here I'm in command of a mechanized infantry rifle platoon, designation Bravo 1 with a support element. I'm also supported by an off-map M120 mortar section and a Raven recon and surveillance UAV. My three infantry squads, Bravo 1-1, 1-2, and 1-3, are armed with M4s, ACOG optics, and a number of specialists, including AT4 anti-tank specialists, two M249 support weapons, an M110 marksman rifle, and an M25 airburst and grenade launcher. Each team carries breach kits for the eventual urban fight to take place, and they're transported in M2A3 Bradleys, which will act as battle taxis and fire support. My on-map support element is comprised of a sniper team, a Mark 19 grenade launcher team, and a fire support spotter for the mortar team and UAV. Op 4 in town are comprised of a dismounted infantry platoon, and intel suggests that they still have one of their motorized transports in or near town as well as multiple support teams, an MMG or medium machine gun team, an ATGM or anti-tank guided missile team, and an unknown number of forward scout teams deployed in the woods around town. This map is heavily wooded as you can see, but the area around town has been deforested and presents a pretty perilous approach for my infantry and their VIX, but also a great opportunity for a strong base of fire. That works both ways. I'll need to scout the woods leading up to the base of fire position on my side and then a potential observation post for my spotter, using Bravo 1-1. And then I'll remount them and shift while 1-2 leapfrogs and clears the next set of trees. 
I'll be using a small road that runs along a depression in the south side of town while my special weapons teams and spotters stealthily take their positions and spot enemy targets ahead of the assault. I'll also call in my Raven UAV to assist in spotting across the town and the forest near town to try to spot those enemy forward observers. Once my approach is secured, I'll push two Bradleys up to the base of fire position and open up with my sniper, grenade launcher, and IFVs. At the same time, I'll call in a steadily increasing mortar barrage on any key targets, especially on the west side of town, which is both safely away from the church and also the side that my infantry are going to be assaulting in from. As my infantry then press forward through the woods, reaching their final waypoint overlooking the town, the mortars will come to a maximum intensity and then cut. I'll shift my base of fire shooting eastward away from the west side of town and push my infantry in from the west, bounding as they go. My other two Bradleys will emerge from the woods to provide select targeted supporting fire, and I'll begin working off a series of phase lines. Phase line Omaha here, phase line Romeo here, and phase line Gatki here. Mount is a meat grinder, and I'm going to take this town slow. The tutorial says to expect casualties, but I'm going to try my best to minimize it. Let's see how it goes. My first and immediate action is to break 1-1 into two fire teams, allowing their units to split up and cover more ground. Their Bradley posts on standby while they enter their respective prongs of forest and sweep through for Russian forward units. I need to make sure there are no light AT units waiting to ambush my mechanized column. Forests are perilous here, and with dense scrub like this, an enemy could be waiting behind any bush hidden by micro-terrain. We have to move slower than I'd like, but we have an hour to seize the town, and I don't want to accelerate the pace until I feel I'm in complete control. As 1-1 finishes clearing up the woods, they hurry back to the road where the column shifts forward to pick them up. As they pull back, a Russian marksman somewhere starts taking pot shots at 1-1 Bravo. One of the shots nicks 1-1's designated marksman. 1-2 leapfrogs and drops off the next tree line to clear it. Meanwhile, the platoon lead vehicle now turns toward the observation post, and the Bradley's thermal optics immediately spot the Russian sniper team in the trees. They're close. The IFB's 25mm cannon makes short work of the sniper team, and platoon lead with the forward observation team make their move up to the observation post, while the special weapons teams dismount their Humvee and prepare to crawl up to the base of fire. 1-2 finishes clearing the woods, and so the full assault force from Bravo-1 dismounts in the woods, just south of the ingress point. Platoon lead and his FO immediately begin spotting Russian scout teams in the woods ahead of 1st platoon, and they phone in the UAV to continue pre-assault reconnaissance. The UAV picks up a BTR-82 with a 30mm cannon concealed within the town, and Bravo-1's FO calls the first round of mortar strikes on it. The shots pepper the area, but ultimately they miss the target. With a few more targets spotted, all three infantry squads begin their push as the FO calls in the full-strength barrage to soften town ahead of their advance. They encounter the Russian scout team, who get the first burst off, but they miss. 1-2 and 1-3's grenadiers respond immediately with GP fire, suppressing the scouts with all three squads bearing down on them. As soon as the barrage begins, the special weapon teams, plus the two Bradleys, push to the crest to base of fire and begin heavy suppression in the front row of buildings on the edge of town. A Russian ATGM and two machine gun teams hold the key high visibility rooftops. The ATGM strikes the front armor of 1-2's Bradley, but the Bradley react to armor detonates, nullifying the effects of the round. A smaller RPG arcs out and detonates near the vehicle's tracks, lightly damaged. My sniper and Mark 42 start taking MG fire while they're getting into position, but the sniper team is able to open fire while the Mark 19 deploys. 1-1 and 1-3's Bradleys push out of the woods to take an alternate angle of fire into some of the town's perimeter buildings as the heavy shelling continues. The town garrison on the receiving end suffers irreversible hearing damage as the barrage continues and the 25 Mike Mike HE rounds critically destabilize one of the frontal buildings. Not long after, another building collapses, leaving the Bradleys and the BTR in full view of one another. 1-1's Bradley immediately sights the BTR through thermals and lands successive AP shots on it, destroying the BTR's IR optics, preventing it from seeing back through the smoke, and then destroys the BTR's main turret, coax MG, and comms array, as well as taking out the gunner. The driver's dazed for a moment and then exits the vehicle for cover. Moments later, 1-2 actually sees the driver fleeing out the back of a nearby building and they drop it. As 1st platoon gets set to breach the town, the heavy base of fire continues, with the Mark 19 and Bradley singing and the sniper picking choice targets. The FO adjusts the UAV's observe mission to catch any Russians fleeing the backside of town, and the base of fire shift their target arcs to the right. Finally, 1-2 and 1-3 issue suppressing fire to cover 1-1's advance. 
As soon as 1-1 reaches the perimeter and sets, 1-2 and 1-3 bound past them to begin clearing through phase line Omaha. Squads begin room-to-room -room clearing on either side of the road. The Russian squad lead engages 1-3 from up the road, but 1-1 and the Bradleys respond. 1-2 apprehends a surrendered enemy soldier and continues clearing. When reaching phase line Omaha, a Russian fire team on the other side of the road from the BTR engages 1-2, pinning them down. 1-3 maneuvers to flank, while 1-1 holds security up the main road. Two Bradleys shift along the west side of town to get a view of the north to assist. 1-2 takes lethal amounts of fire, now from three different Russian fire teams. They try to make a stand, but incur five casualties. They pop smoke and dig in. Meanwhile, 1-3 pops smoke and breaches a concrete wall behind the BTR. They begin their assault of the Russian position, taking one casualty amid the spray of bullets into the smoke. The northmost Bradley blows a second hole in the concrete wall and spots the surviving members of the Russian ATGM team and recon team, neither of which are equipped to handle this kind of urban combat, as they retreat out of town to the north. It engages and tracks them as they flee. 1-3 finishes its flank and clear, savagely double-tapping the ambushing op for a fire team and moves back out to get set for phase line Romeo. With Bradleys covering the main avenues through town, 1-1 pushes forward to the outside of 1-2's building and gets set as well, while 1-2 uses the momentary lull to dress their wounded and try to recover. With the sole remaining scout and ATGM ammo bearer surrendering and the base of fire shifting their targeting to the final line of buildings, 1-1 and 1-3 push through to the chapel and to phase line GAC. 1-1's engaged at close range from the building just next door. They drive one Russian to surrender and reveal a light machine gun team. They take one casualty, but overwhelm the Russian position with fire. Meanwhile, fire from the church and the building behind it engages both 1-1 and 1-3. 1-3 takes a few hits, but they pop smoke and continue their push. The Bradleys light up the buildings along phase line Gatki, trying to obliterate any further fortified ambushes. And that concludes it. Bravo 1 seizes the town center, and the heavy supporting fire drives the remaining five Russian troops to surrender. Total victory for Blue 4. Out of four armored vehicles, one Humvee, and 51 men, we unfortunately took nine casualties. Four of the five casualties in 1-2 in that ambush didn't make it and were marked KIA. One member of 1-3 was killed immediately when they were pulling that flank on the Russian ambush, and then another one from 1-3 and the AT specialist from 1-1 took non-life-threatening injuries. I think things went decently well leading up to the assault. Mount is absolutely brutal. And I'm not sure if 5 KIA and 4 Wounded is decent for this exercise or not, but clearing room to room involves so much random chance. Is a soldier looking in the right direction just at the right time to spot someone and get the jump on them? Do they happen to have just the right sight angle to peek someone unassuming? Are your base of fire elements actually able to reach the enemy? In this case, 100% of my casualties, Wounded and KIA, came from an attack that occurred totally out of view from the base of fire, obstructed by the large central building in town. I'm going to continue to practice with these games, and I'll probably post more of these as I learn and get more confident. I feel like a few more mistakes, and I could have taken four times the casualties I did here, and I only got these results after watching loads of videos from more skilled CM players showcasing mountain urban assault tactics. See if I can improve, though. In the meantime, we still have a mission complete. That was intense and mentally exhausting to plan, but a hell of a lot of fun. If this game looks interesting, you should try one of them. They're all on Steam, and they often go to 50% off during big holiday sales. Just be prepared to invest some time and patience. It's a totally different vibe from StarCraft or Company of Heroes. There are single-player campaigns. There are one-off scenarios. Like I said, the modding community has been busy. And there are a boatload of user-made missions to try out. Uh, there's also a quick play mode where you can engage the AI and either defend against them or attack. But similar to the Men of War series and some other games, uh, the attacking AI are kind of shitty. So they will just charge suicidally at you until you win. Uh, so attacks are really the only way to do it. And even then in quick battle mode, they kind of make some weird decisions. So multiplayer is actually also a big deal. Um, you can play multiplayer. Uh, there's real time, there's turn-based. A popular way to do it is playing by email where you exchange the save file with a friend and go back and forth. Um, I'll be curious to hear if any of you all have experience with this game or uh, get interested in it from, from this uh, and get into it yourselves. Anyway. Appreciate you watching. Uh, leave any comments on, on how you think this went or where you see I made mistakes. I'd love to get better. Uh, and so any feedback is certainly welcome. Until next time, cheers.